Hello, my name is Harvey Ambrose, and I am preaching this message to listeners of Missionary Baptist Voice of Africa through the radio station in Monrovia, Liberia, and continuing in our study of the Gospel according to John, chapter 18, and beginning in verse 33. John 18, verse 33, which reads, Then Pilate entered into judgment, the judgment hall again, and called Jesus, and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it of thee? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou then a king? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Every one that is of the truth heareth my voice. And I'll end the reading there and try to preach this. Last week, the sermon seemed to dwell perhaps on uh, Christ's kingdom not being of this world. Uh, obviously, from the text that I read, that is still uh, a part of what's going on here. But it enters now more into a a one-on-one -on -one colloquy, if you will, between Christ and Pontius Pilate. We're no longer at this point dealing uh, with the Jewish rulers. It would appear that um, that when Christ was first brought, as related in the Synoptic Gospels, that uh, he was questioned by Pilate whether he was the king of the Jews, and he answered he was not. <clears throat> Pilate then, as we found in John chapter 18 and uh, verse 29, went out to the Jews and, and asked uh, what the accusations against him were. And we read in Matthew what those were, and I'll just summarize them. Well, no, I won't. I'll just go ahead and proceed. They, they brought three accusations, uh, one of which is that he made himself to be a king, a king, not the king of the Jews, but a king. And it's about that that the Lord and Kai, or the Lord and Pilate now speak. So <clears throat> now he goes back. Pilate goes back to Jesus on a what would seem to be a, uh, a needed or a necessary examination of this accused person, Jesus Christ, but also a a friendly one, in so much that. Uh, last week I tried to talk as though since he had no other advocate, Pilate took it upon himself to, to do all the offices of a defense attorney as well as that of judge. The prosecutors he'd given their case, which is, well, we wouldn't have brought him to you if he had not <laughs> been a malefactor, so kill him. And unwilling to be that type of judge, then Pilate has appointed to himself the responsibility of finding the truth regarding Christ, at least insofar as the charges that are brought against him. So now he's back into the judgment hall with Christ alone, it would appear. Uh, and he says uh, unto him, Pilate entered the judgment hall again. This is verse 33. And called Jesus and said unto him. So he he brings Christ to him. They're, they're face to face. They're, they're alone. And he says, Art thou the king of the Jews? He had already asked this in a more open setting. And he got an answer, which Christ could do no other than to say, He couldn't sit there in front of Jews or other witnesses and say, I'm not a king of these people. That would be, well, it, it would not be true. But that doesn't, enter into the accusation that the Pharisees brought against him and the chief priest, 
which was that he made himself to be a king. Now, they specifically got away from saying he makes himself to be our king, but he makes himself to be a king. And they hoped, I think, that Pilate would take that as a, an accusation that he was uh, setting himself up to be a king in opposition to uh, the ruler of the known world at that time, which was Caesar. And therefore, they would hope to, uh, to get Pilate on their side and, and crucify him for insurrection against the lawful government of that region. Christ had to say no. Well, he didn't, uh, well, he, he had to say, yes, I am a king, but he did not have to say he was that kind of king. So something about him, I, I can't tell you what it is. Something entered into Pilate's mind or heart that, that this person who obviously looked innocent, uh, that there, that his answer was not completely in depth. And he wanted to have a private audience with the Lord to find out just exactly uh, the Lord's position on whether or not he's a king. So he asked them, he says, Art thou, and this is specific, art thou the king of the Jews? And, uh, and I think that even though the, the charges were not that he was the king of the Jews, Pilate knew enough about the Messianic prophecies. He knew enough about Christ activities uh, during the last three and a half years in Jerusalem and outside of Jerusalem. Uh, he, he knew that, that what Christ, if anything, had represented would be that he was the king of the Jews, not the king of the whole world, just the king of the Jews. And so he asked that question, art thou the king of the Jews? Which probably, even in Pilate's mind, suggested that he was asking, art thou the Messiah, the king of the Jews? Same thing, the Christ, the king of the Jews, the, the anointed one, the expected one, the, the hope of Israel. Are, are you he? As I mentioned last week, Pilate didn't live in a vacuum. He lived in the city of Jerusalem. He was, he was there. He knew, he knew all that was going on. He had his spies and he was personally present. He, he knew all these Jewish rulers uh, by name. He dealt with them. He, he fought with them. He didn't like them a lot, I don't think. But it was his job to be there, and he was there. And he knew what he could have learned absent deliberate attempt to come to know Christ. He could have done that too, but we don't read that that ever happened. But here he's asking this question, Art thou the king of the Jews? To which Christ now doesn't answer immediately he had answered before when he said thou sayest that i am now he asked it again in private and in private he gives a more full uh he enters more fully into what is meant by him being the king so rather than giving an answer immediately he asked a question and the question is jesus answered him Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Now that doesn't seem to be an answer at all. But Pilate's response to the answer will then trigger how Christ answers Pilate's question as to whether or not he's the king of the Jews. It would appear that... <laughs> It would appear that the Lord is doing with Pilate, this Gentile ruler, that this, uh, this appointee of Caesar, the representative of the power of the world, and to whom he now speaks. The Lord is doing the same thing with him that he does with all people. He looks into his heart and he probes his heart. Remember, it is said of him, never man spake like this man. And, and they were true in saying that about Christ. Christ speaks uh, without any guile. That there's nothing, there's no subterfuge. And he speaks with an intention to help those to whom he's speaking. Even if they are his avowed enemies. 
The thing that he speaks to them is for their benefit, whether they receive it or not. He, is, he did not come to the world to destroy the world, but to save the world. He doesn't save the world all at once. He saves them person by person by person. He does not save them by what they do, but by himself saving them. And he saves them, uh, we learn later, you know, through the actions of the Holy Ghost who would come after he is lifted up from the world. Uh, in this day and age, through the Spirit of God, he still probes, he touches the hearts of the people of this world. He questions them in a sense. He is the one that is being questioned officially by Pilate. But he flips that around and now he has Pilate not so much on the defensive but partially. Because it always puts people on the defensive when God touches their heart in conviction, in probing questions such as, do you believe in God? Do you believe in what's right? Do, uh, do you, what do you think of yourself? What, what kind of a person are you? Do, do your actions live up to your words? Do your actions live up to God's expectation and requirements of you? He doesn't say those words. But your heart understands it. When the Spirit touches it in conviction. And He was now thus, if you will... And I'm sure it's true because he did it with everyone. He's trying uh, to save the spirit, the soul, if you will. It's not quite the same. A Pontius Pilate. He wants Pilate to be saved. We, we know that he, uh, he's not willing that any should perish. But that all should come to repentance. Jesus, the, the merciful God. In flesh. Speaking to this ruler begins to evangelize him. So when he asked this, he must have known. He saw into Pilate's heart and that there was, there was at least some genuine interest on Pilate's part. He may not have been interested, you know, early on in Christ's life, may have heard practically nothing about him other uh, than what the, the old King Herod had questioned and then killed all those people way back then. I, he may not know about that, but certainly since he has been governor, he has had an interest, an intellectual interest, if, if not a dutiful interest as, as Caesar's man there to keep the peace. He had to know what was going on and, and Christ was doing things that, that were Famous, huge, huge multitudes wherever he went. Crazy sounding things like, like feeding thousands of people from two bread and, and five loaves of, of bread, or two fish and five loaves of bread. Insane things like raising three people from the dead, the, the lepers being healed, and, and sight given to people born blind. He'd heard all this, he had heard about the wonder. Of his sermons and how it reached out and 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 it somehow it, it grabbed people. He no doubt had heard of these things and and I think that Christ perceived within him because he knows exactly what's in man in each one of us. He knew what was in Pilate, so he asked them this question just like he does us when we when we finally if we if we ever finally develop some genuine thought of is it possible that there is a God and that I am answerable to this God and should I in any honesty try to find an answer to this this probing question that that is somehow on my heart <laughs> well the somehow is the Spirit of God placing that question on your heart Placing that, that concern or that fear or that dread or, or just that, uh, you know, uh, what's, the, what's the word for it? When, when you just want to know something, that interest. Well, here it was, I think, in Pilate. Or else this question would not have been the one that Christ had. He didn't waste words. Do you say this thing of yourself? If Pilate, is this something that comes up from your own heart? Is this really something you want to enter into with me? Do you want to know what kind of king I am? 
Do you want to know what it means to be the King of the Jews? Do you want to know what the Messiah, uh, the long-awaited Messiah of this nation that you rule? Uh, do you want to know what that means? What all the prophets have spoken of? What, what type of kingdom is this? What, do you want to know these things of your own heart? Is it really in your heart to know me? When the Lord deals with people, He deals honestly with them. And, and, and when He does, we feel that. We feel it. And when we're, when we're still in a state of being lost, and we, and we first begin to feel that probing, we repulse against that. We, we recoil from that. Because, well, I'll tell you what it is. It's not of this world. With that, that conviction that comes is not just from something we read in a book. People can read the Bible all the time and not have conviction on their heart. They can read that they are sinners. They can read all about how all men have fallen short of the glory of God. All men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All men are, are this or that or whatever. And, and the curse is upon the world and, and we're all sinners. And it's all true. But they don't feel that. It doesn't bother them. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't concern them. Until the Spirit of God touches their heart. And that Spirit is not of this world. It's of another world. It, or another kingdom. Or another, I should say, realm. I don't know if it's a planet. It will be a planet. He says he's going to create a new world. And that's going to be the, the seat, if you will, of that kingdom. But... As of now, we don't know much about it other than, than that other place, that other realm, is where God dwells. It's where one, at least one physical body, and I would assume maybe two others. I'm not un exactly sure uh, the state of Enoch and Elijah, who, were, who never died in this world, but were translated and taken to God. Well, you know, they have physicality, maybe, I think. I know the Lord does. And, and so wherever that place is, that's where the Spirit is from. And He's in this world and that realm at the same time. But He's He's touching your heart. He's probing it. He's, he's trying to make you with a very uh, cold heart towards God. A, a, a heart that is not warm towards God at all. That doesn't care about Him, but, but now has begun to think about Him. He, he begins to probe you with is this what you want to know about? Do you really want to know about me and the salvation that comes from me? Meaning Christ comes from Christ. Do you want to know Jesus? Do you, you know, he had said, come unto me all ye that labor. Is it that way that you come to me? And are heavy laden. Pilate, is there, is there a burden of sin on your heart? Are you weighed down by guilt? Or are you fearful of death? Are you, are you dreading the grave? Do you hate your own ignorance of the important things? The, 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 the truly the only things that ought to matter to mankind. The, the great subjects of life and death. Uh, of God and, 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 and of righteousness and of, and of evil and... Are you there? Is, is that your words? Is that your own concern? Is essentially what he's asking. I'm taking too long, but I, I'm trying to get into this and I'm, I'm failing. Is this what you say of yourself? Is this the desire of your heart, Pilate? He says, or did others tell it of thee, of me? Tell it thee of me. So he's saying, are you just asking as a part of your duty as judge here? Or do you really want to know? Well, see, I think the real answer was he really wanted to know, but that's not the pilot. That, that's uh, Pilate's heart spoke better than his words do. I, I think he did want to know, but when Christ through the Spirit touched his heart, like I did, like most people do, we recoil from that touch. It's 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 from another world. It's it's, it's not anything you've ever felt before. And, and what you feel when it touches is you don't feel good. You feel kind of like you're on the spot. Like somehow or other you are being judged. And, and being judged you are found wanting. You lack what you need. Do you say it of yourself? 
we all have this interview, if you will. We, we think we're probing Christ. Well, I've heard about Christianity. I've read what it says. I, I've, I've been taught it since a child. Or, or, or I'm a Muslim, but I, I kind of want to know about that. You know, whatever it is. Somehow or other, it does it. Almost with all of us, I would think. Enter our minds to think about these things. A curiosity. If nothing else. So we're going to interrogate Christ. Like Pilate was interrogating Christ. But when you start to honestly interrogate, to learn something of Christ, then Christ speaks in a way no one ever spake, which is to your heart, to the inward person. And it is very uncomfortable. Some people leave it at that and they never come back. They never try again. I didn't feel good about that. I just don't like that. It made me feel bad. And they don't blame it on on the Lord because they don't want to admit that he is who he is. They don't want to think that it was really the spirit of God that made them feel bad. So they're going to blame it on, on, on some preacher or some church or some, or on whoever. They're, they're going to say, well, this one, told, I, I don't want to have anything to do with that. When I heard it first, I was 17 years old and was in an old timey Baptist church and, and I'd never been in one before. And the preacher was preaching and, and, and he didn't know me at all. I was just one of many in that place. And yet I thought he was condemning me. Every word that came out of his mouth is I was saying, uh, you, Harvey, you're a sinner. You're going to hell. You deserve to be there. God's right to put you there. I felt that. He didn't say that, but I felt that. Well, you know who it was that was saying it? It was the Spirit sent by Christ to deal with my heart and caused me to repent. I didn't repent. And I blamed my anger and my fear. Every bad feeling I had. Which was. I, I never felt so bad in my whole life is that day. I blamed it all on that preacher. And on that church. Who had nothing to do with it. Because they weren't even saying those words. And he wasn't talking to me. Didn't know me. Didn't know I was there. But. The way the devil clouded my mind, I transferred my anger to the man rather than to God, who was the one that was probing. I certainly meant to go further than this, but, but this is where I am and I'll try to go with it. So Pilate answered, just like I answered, I, I was mad at all them. Well, he's mad because his heart has been touched. Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? <laughs> well, now, he's a proud Roman. He's not a Jew. He, the Jews are a bunch of troublemakers whom he would rather be a governor somewhere else. But this is where he is. And he's not at all envious of Jews nor are worshiping Jews nor, nor to set them up above other people like so many people try to today. This is just his job. He's there. And, and he's like, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Is it of myself? I'm a Roman. I'm of, that, I'm of that people that rule in this world. What do you mean asking me a question like that? He's recalling from what happened in his heart. And he's saying something that is a little bit disingenuous. He didn't just come out and say, well, yes, Jesus, I do want to know. I've been troubled in heart lately. Some of the things you've talked about that I've heard people say. I want to hear more about that because... I feel guilty and I feel in trouble. I feel like I need some help. He didn't do any of that. He does the wrong thing like so many of us do. He said, am I a Jew? In other words, you start becoming, well, I mean, it led me to being an atheist. I just denied all of that because I didn't, I didn't like how I'd felt. It took me a while, but it wasn't long, wasn't too long before I gave up any thought of God for a very long time. Pilate, I hope did better, but he didn't initially. We know that. Am I a Jew? And then he goes on, you know, saying, well, you know, you're supposed to be a king of the Jews. You had said, thou sayest it earlier. So he says, uh, thine own nation, your people, you know, you're the king. It's your, your subjects, your chief priest. What kind of a king are you? In other words, he's, he's fighting, he's kicking against the goads, against the pricks. The, th the very same thing that the Lord accused, and rightfully so, Saul of Tarsus about later on. The whole nation and chief priest delivered thee unto me. 
what hast thou done? So now he just falls right back on his legal jurisdiction and not so much that of a friendly advocate or examiner. Now he is, he's saying, what do you do? And because that's what, you know, the, 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 the Romans weren't uh, Chinese uh, mysticists that wanted to know about the celestial realms. They were, they were terra firma. They ruled here. They weren't Greeks seeking after wisdom. They wanted to know the facts. The facts on the ground. They were, they were very much like a lot of modern uh, Western civilization. It just show me the facts and I'll be able to deal with all that. I don't want to hear all this other stuff. You know, what really matters is actions. What were your actions that brought you to this point? See, what hast thou done? That's the question he should ask. He asks some more before this is all over. But this is the first one other than just are you the king? Now, so I guess it'd be the second one. He asks, are you the king of the Jews? He doesn't get an answer this time. So he asks his second question is, what have you done? Well, Jesus' question bears on what I tried to talk about uh, last week. Huh. He says, Jesus answers, my kingdom. So his answer is to the first question. Now that he has from Pilate's own mouth, that he doesn't want to sincerely learn the truth of God. What he wants is to deal with this situation. So in answer to that, Jesus gives him a, a full answer of what he means by saying that he is the king of the Jews. He says, my kingdom is not of this world. So in that one phrase right there, that clause of a, of a compound sentence, he says that he's got a kingdom already. My kingdom is not of this world. Right? He didn't say my kingdom, when it comes, will not be of this. It says my kingdom is not of this world. It, it exists now. It is his. He's saying I am a king or else it wouldn't be his kingdom. I am a king. My kingdom is. He has a kingdom. But the kingdom is not of this world. So, so when the, the Pharisees told you that I made myself to be a king, I'm not saying I'm a king in this world's sense of that. I am not trying to subvert the, the rulers of this world. I, I'm not trying to, uh, to substitute myself. Uh, I don't know how to say it exactly right. I'm not trying to interfere with their lawful execution of their duties as kings of various kingdoms on this world. After all, it was Christ that appointed them those kingdoms that has given them some temporary form, uh, form of rule uh, so that they can somehow or other bridle human behavior. He said, I have a kingdom. It is now, but it is not of this world. Not of this world. So also in that clause, he is telling Pilate, there's another, this, there's another kingdom. There's a, there, there is a kingdom that is exclusive of this world. Something out there. Something beyond this world. There's a kingdom. There's a place. It, there's a, there, there, there are beings that are ruled by a king. And I'm the king. But it's not of this world. That answers the question right there. Because, yeah, I'm a king. But not in the sense that should concern Caesar, not in the sense that concerns you, his representative on earth, not that should concern uh, really these Jews because they're not in that kingdom either. My kingdom is not of this world. Then he goes on, he says, if my kingdom were, it's not, but if it were. So three times in, in this verse, he is going to, in fact, it's three times in this long compound sentence, in a single sentence, he mentions his kingdom and it's continued existence. It's already there. First, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were, it's not, but if it were, so a hypothetical here, he says, then, in that case, would my servants fight? They would fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. Well, people wonder who are his servants. Most people just assume that's that ragtag band up there that, that fled away from Gethsemane in fear a punishment. In other words, his 12 disciples and maybe a few others that, you know, that would stand up for him, but aren't right now. Those people would be his servants. 
that would fight. Some people think sometime in the future when there's more, there'd be those that would fight. But it's too late for that. I mean, he's talking about right now. Uh, I've been delivered to the Jews who have now brought me to you to be put to death because they can't do it. So, so if my kingdom over which I now reign were a worldly kingdom, I wouldn't be here before you as a, as a prisoner, but you would be before me as such. I would be trying you and not the way, other way around because my servants would fight to prevent me being delivered thus in your presence for judgment. Well, who are they then? If they're not people, well, it's that innumerable host of angels, those that he told Peter that even now, when he was in the garden, all I have to do, this is after Peter cut off Malchus here, he said, don't you know that, that all I have to do is, is ask and there's 12 legions of angels that would deliver me from these people. That kingdom, which we know so little about, is composed, it, I think it's probably only these, it, it's God. And it's an innumerable host of angels. And ultimately, all those who have entered that kingdom through birth, meaning the second birth, having been born again, born originally in the flesh as persons of this world's kingdoms, but born a second time in the spirit of, of the very seed of God himself into a kingdom not seen in this world, yet real, and yet in the future at the resurrection to be made completely physical, the, the, the subjects of it, to have their bodies raised and, and their spirits and bodies reunited to one living soul, which is a, a heavenly body, a, a uh, not a heavenly body, a, uh, a spiritual body raised from the dead, altogether righteous, with no taint of sin, altogether subservient to God, not, not one fraction of enmity against God anymore, and all installed into a world that is to be newly made, in which there has never been any sin and never will be. That's the kingdom that we're talking about. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight. In other words, the angels would never let anything happen to him that he didn't explicitly allow, which means it's an explanation where he says, no one can take my life from me. I can lay it down. I have the power to lay it down. I have the power to take it back up again, he means in resurrection. So he is now laying it down. He's drinking the cup that his father gave him to drink. So that he could be a ransom for the lives of many. And the angels are held at bay by his express will. They are not doing anything to prevent it. But then he ends that verse 36 with. But now is my kingdom not from hence. He doesn't mean just now. The kingdom is not of this world. Never was. Never will be of this world. It'll be in another world sometime. But it's not of this world. But people have this idea that they can't get rid of this, this lust for this world. Even the religious people, that, that they're just thinking this world, this world, physical, physical. And they, they can't get their mind around a spiritual salvation that leads to a physical reality. When Christ comes back, it makes that which is spiritual and physical, both holy now rejoined together into a perfect kingdom that lasts not for a thousand years, but forever and ever and ever and ever, in which dwells righteousness, in which dwells Christ the King, from whom the entire city there is lit by him personally. He is the light thereof. When, when all worship takes place in that place, it will be in Christ because he is the temple of the place. Where all men one day that survive judgment, where all men will worship God. I had meant to finish talking about the rest of this, but, but I can't in the time we have. It's a different world. And he's telling this in answer to Pilate's question, art thou a king of the Jews? 
At first, he needed to get Pilate to say what he what his intentions were, what he really wanted to know. Once he said, I'm not a Jew, I learned it from somebody else. He said, okay, fair enough. Then I'm not the kind of king that they're talking about, nor the kind of king you need to be worried about. Here's the kind of king I am. I dwell over a realm, I, I, I rule over a realm in which uh, we're not of this world, even though, as you see, I have entered into this world. I've come into this world. I was born and I came into this world from a pre-existent state. I came into this world to work my will in this world. And there's no earthly king that need fear what I'm doing here right now. They can fear what I'm going to do later, but not now. Don't worry about me. I'm just here to save. I'm not here to destroy, but, but to heal but to help. So I'm injected myself into this world and I'm still reigning in my kingdom. But part of that reign includes me saving people from their sins. And I'm here to do that. He's not said all that because Pilate didn't say, well, it's really the, the sincere desire of my heart to know about you. He could have told him all those things. But Pilate, having recoiled from that first touch on it. It's not the last, but from that first touch on his heart by the Spirit of God as directed by Christ. He recoils, and so the Lord, just as he recoiled back to the physical, the Lord answers then his physical question, no, I'm not a king in any sense that should matter to you as a judge, but in a sense that should matter to you as a human being, I am the only king, the only one that lasts. All other kings, one day their knees will bow before me. And I'll judge them. But right now, you don't have to worry about that. So, such as it is, this is the message. God bless you all. It is by prayer. Amen.